our Savior, Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. Thank the Lord for another day. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad. Give an honor to the pastor, the angel, the bishop of this house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. For being a leader, being a friend, being a confidant. For our sister pastor, Donald Blunt. Amen. Good to see you in the house of the Lord and Amen. To all you fine deacons and preachers and musicians and everyone who started to come out this morning. Fight back the flesh, because that flesh will keep you in that bed. You let the devil fights more harder on Sunday morning than any other morning of the week. Because he knows if this world gets in you, it will begin to produce life. And how many know the devil wants you dead? The devil wants you dead. You don't mind if you a living dead person. If you don't know the Lord, you are like the bitch that you're a walking dead. Just a matter of time. But I thank the Lord that I found the light. That He opened my eyes. His Holy Spirit prompted me. And I accepted the call of my life. Friends may turn their back on you. Loved ones may turn their back on you. But I'm going to press forward to the mark of the high call of how God. Hallelujah, somebody. But well, we'll be coming out of Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, one of the synoptic gospels. Matthew 13. Jesus is our Jewish Savior. He's the Christ. I'll be reading verses 4 through 8. Then I'm going to swing down to 18 through 23. Then I'm going to go to 1 Samuel. I'll repeat this again. 1 Samuel 22, verses 1 and 2. Then 2 Samuel, verse, chapter 23, verses 8 and 9. And I'll repeat all that. But let's start with Matthew. Verse, chapter 13, verse 4 through 8. And he sold some seeds, fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and for which sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root. They withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Go down to verse 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the soul. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then come up the wicked one and catch him away which was sown in his heart. This is which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the seed is he that heareth the word, and anon of joy receiving. Yet he hath no root in himself, but dureth for a while. But when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by, he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns, he that heareth the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceptiveness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, and also bear fruit and bring forth some a hundred, sixty, and third. Amen. Amen. Now swing over to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 22 verses 1 through 2. It's 1 Samuel chapter 22 verses 1 through 2. Amen. Amen. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Abdul. And when his brother and all his father's house heard it, they went down hither to him. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them, and there were with him about 400 men. Verse 2 Samuel, chapter 23, 
verses 8 and 9. 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 8 and 9. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had, the Tachmanite, that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. The same was Adino, the Isnite. He lifted up his spear against 800, whom he slew at one time. And after him was Elizael, the son of Dodo, the Ebonite, one of the three mighty men with David. And when they defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away, he, talking about Elizael, arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand cleaved to the sword. And the word brought a great, and the Lord brought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to the sword. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord shall stand forever. I'll be using four subjects today. What type of seed are you? What type of seed are you? And are you reproducing? What type of seed are you? And are you reproducing? Growing up, I used to live in 3710 Liberty Heights Avenue. And my sister and I would catch the school bus, catch the bus to Woodlawn in the morning. We would catch the M6 bus, which would take us to Windsor Mill Road. And other times when the weather was inclement, my mother would take us to the school bus in Woodlawn. And I really enjoyed those times my mother took us to, to the school bus because she would play Heaven 600. And even as a child, I knew the power of the gospel. That's why it's so important to keep your children in the house of the Lord. See, as a child, I didn't have an option. On Sundays, I was in the house of the Lord. Nevertheless, Heaven 600 played two songs that stick to my soul even 30 some odd years later. The first song was, in my veins, in my veins, in my veins, in my veins, while the blood running warm, in my veins. How many of y'all know that song? The Lord has a way that you can't go over. God has a way that you can't go under. And God has a way that you can't go around. You must come in at the door. And how many of y'all know that Jesus is the only way? He is not a way. But he is the only way. He's the truth and the life. Do I have one or two witnesses? Jesus is the truth and the life. The second sum was there's a war going on. And if you're going to win, you better have Jesus deep down within. This battle cannot be won with bullets and guns. But you must have the sword, which is the word of God, deep down in your soul. How you, many of you believe that God's word is a mighty sword? Yeah. How many of y'all believe his word is a mighty sword? Yeah. The Bible says in Jeremiah 23, It's my word like fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Yes. And how many of you have some rocky areas in your heart that need to be broke up this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. Well, the only solution to those rocky areas is the word of God. Yeah. See, when the seed is sown into your life, you must have faith that God is able to multiply that seed. Yeah. And watch the mighty hand of God move that rocky mountain out of your life. Yeah. In 1998, I joined the United States Army. And I took basic training in Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And while I'm basic training, I had two drill sergeants, Drill Sergeant Heard and Drill Sergeant Fever. And they both were airborne rangers. They were two men that was tough as nails. They taught me how to fight. They showed me you can either live, listen and live, or ignore and die. Immediately I knew I was being trained as a soldier. They taught us the weaponry. Ultimately they taught us how to kill the enemy. And when I finished basic training, I was a lean, mean, fighting, killing machine. What the army produced was a soldier. Hallelujah, somebody. But more important than the United States Army is the army of the Lord. The Most High God is looking to sow his seed, his word into the spirit and produce Christian soldiers. Hallelujah, somebody. God is always looking to transfer his spirit into a willing vessel. The question is, are you willing to receive the spirit of the 
Lord. No matter how good you preach the word, only the heart prepared by the Holy Spirit will receive that word. The writer of Hebrews says, while it said today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. So in our text, Jesus was training these men as soldiers in the service of the kingdom of God. Whether you like it or not, my brother and sister, you are in a spiritual war. Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. And as a Christian, warring is not an option. Yeah. It's the only way we live. It's the only way we will survive. Yeah. But Jesus would never put you in a battle unprepared. Yeah. But Jesus said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, yeah. but mighty in the pulling down of strongholds. Yeah. Jesus also said, Lord, I'm with you. Church 
every Sunday and not change who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do you sit on the same pew every Sunday and still evil? Hallelujah, somebody. Because you are under an attack by the enemy and you are sound asleep, but your eyes may be wide open. And some of you, your eyes are closed tightly. Amen. See, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And many of you have been destroyed by your mind. That's why Paul tells us, conform not to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Where are my transformed Christians at? If you know God has transformed you, and you know you are living a new life, you should come to church and give the Lord some praise.
and like a plant with shallow roots, you will wither away. Your Christianity will not last. Hallelujah, somebody. Got a little quiet here, but this, this is what the word of God gave me this word. He gave me this word. I said, Lord, whatever you give me, I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach. It's easy to tip the ears. When the Spirit speaks expressly in the last days, men will not endure sound doctrine. Hallelujah, somebody. The third seed is the stony heart. You hear the word, and oftentimes you will come to Bible study. Sometimes you may find you in Sunday school. You receive the word, and you have some depth to your understanding and commitment to God's word. I liken you to a river that's 30 miles long but three inches deep. Hallelujah, somebody. The psalm states, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the seat of the sinners, nor sitteth at the seat of the scornful. You see the progression? You start walking with God. Then you stop. Then you start walking with sinners. And as you continue to walk with sinners, you stop and stand with sinners. We just call that shooting a job, just standing around hanging with the sinners. Then after a while it gets so good to you, you have a seat with that sinner. Now you in it. And what has just happened is you stop walking for the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. Your movement with God stops. Then you sit with the sinner. You have totally surrendered yourself. How about that job promotion that will pay you more money but pull you away from God? Hallelujah, somebody. How about the deceitful of riches that will make a person believe in their money, in their bank account, more than they believe in God? Now how about that new husband or wife that you love more than Jesus? Hallelujah, somebody. You honor your spouse more than you reverence the Lord. Then the word is choked out. Choke means gag or vilely poured out of you. See, Satan knows you have some death. So he comes at you just a little bit hard and beats onto you until you submit and then you stop growing. And ultimately, you are lost. But Jesus said in John 15, every branch that bears not fruit, he takes away. He will remove you from the body of Christ. Hallelujah, somebody. It's real wise, huh? God is talking to somebody. What kind of seed are you? And all of us can find ourselves in this sermon. So all of us can find ourselves deep around in this sermon. But the fourth seed. Hallelujah, somebody. The fourth seed. But he who receives into good ground. And what is good ground? Ground that has been prepared and plowed by the Holy Spirit because of conviction of sin. He hears the word and understands the word. The Lord, the Lord will reward those who diligently seek him, giving them even more understanding. And ultimately, you begin to produce good fruit. Some of you will bring forth a hundredfold. Some of you will bring forth sixtyfold. And some of you will bring forth thirtyfold. And that's just, you are producing good fruit. Amen. Where are my fruit producers at in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah, somebody. Where are my fruit producers in the house of the Lord? Those who will push back this flesh and say, for God I live, and for God I die. For those who will pick up the cross and follow the Lord. My friends may turn their backs on me. My loved ones may turn their backs on me. I may not get called to go to the latest party, Bishop. I may not get invited to preach at some of the biggest churches, but I will preach the word of the Lord because I want to see all of you become the poor soil. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. So let's look at the second passage of scripture. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave at Hulu. And when his brothers and all his fathers heard it, they went down to hear him. And everyone that was in distress, how many of y'all in distress? At times, you have distress in your life. And everyone that was in debt, how many of y'all have some debt in your life? Amen. I'm not home. If their credit calls, don't answer the phone. I am not home. 
Hallelujah, somebody. And everyone that's discontented, you may not have everything you want, so you get discontented. And, be, and they gathered themselves unto David. And he became a captain over them. There was about 400 men. The cave of Adullam was about 12 miles south of Bethlehem, which was David's headquarters at the time. David composed Psalms 57 while in this cave. And many of David's songs were composed in times of great distress when he was inspired by the Holy Spirit. How many of you know God uses everything for your good? How many of you all know God uses everything for your good? How many of you all believe that all things work together for those who trust and believe in the Lord? Even bad situations are working for my good. If you trust in the Lord, no matter how dark the night, you know that there will be a brighter day on the other side. If you keep your faith in God, and don't be weary in well-doing, if you understand that your labor is not in vain, stand still and watch the salvation.